The podcast opens with a discussion on novel ways of balancing relaxation and productivity, where Palmer introduces the concept of float tanks, saltwater tanks, where the body is suspended in neutral buoyancy, eliminating sensory input and external distractions. He extols the benefits of flotation for mental clarity, relaxation, and creative thinking, emphasizing how the neutral temperature and isotonic nature of the water mimics the skin, creating a sensation akin to flying. Palmer then reveals a fascinating project by one of his friends who is attempting to create a float computing rig that integrates waterproof keyboards, mice, and VR headsets, enabling programming while submerged in a float tank. The technical challenge primarily lies with waterproofing the mouse effectively due to its design and the need for precise control underwater. This illuminates the innovative intersections of technology and lifestyle, where productivity and sensory deprivation might harmonize for enhanced cognitive performance. The discussion reflects Palmer's ongoing interest in pushing boundaries by coupling emerging technologies with unconventional environments. The conversation pivots to Palmer's groundbreaking work in virtual reality. He recounts how, as a teenager, he developed the first Oculus Rift prototype around the ages of 14 to 16, eventually founding Oculus VR and releasing the product before selling the company to Facebook for billions. One of the defining moments in his career was his collaboration with John Carmack, a VR pioneer and legendary figure in the gaming industry. Their relationship began over internet forums where they exchanged ideas about reducing latency in VR headsets. Carmack's endorsement was pivotal, helping Oculus gain attention and credibility in a time where VR was widely dismissed as niche or unrealizable. John Carmack eventually joined Oculus as CTO, allowing Palmer the rare opportunity to collaborate intimately with a childhood hero. Their work helped elevate VR from fringe technology to a mainstream platform and Palmer credits Carmack's technical genius and early advocacy as game-changing. Carmack himself was a Beat Saber enthusiast, and Palmer praises VR gaming for breaking the stereotype that video games promote sedentary lifestyles. He highlights titles like Beat Saber and VR boxing games such as those developed by Servios, underscoring how VR demands full-body engagement, delivering workouts and coordination training. The hosts touch on the emerging domain of robotically operated combat sports leagues, where robots controlled by VR technology engage in competitive fights. Palmer describes conversations with friends working on these leagues, noting an upcoming US versus China event showcasing robot combatants. One idea explored is programming AI-controlled robots to emulate specific fighters, creating sparring partners that replicate the styles and capabilities of top-level boxers, enabling professionals like Logan Paul to train virtually against augmented versions of themselves or legendary opponents. This progression is not mere speculation, but an extension of ongoing work, embracing robotics, AI, and VR as tools to transform combat training. Of particular interest is the balance between realism and safety, where robots can pull their punches and adjust force dynamically to simulate real fighting without injuries, arguably offering more precise control than human counterparts. Palmer envisions the melding of AI and robotics into combat sports, with machine learning enabling adaptive strategies informed by historical combat footage and style analysis. This represents a paradigm where tactical training and robot-human hybrid competition become new frontiers in both sports and military applications. A substantial part of the discussion delves into unidentified aerial phenomena, UAP, and military responses. Palmer shares insights from his defense sector perspective on recent declassified footage, such as a missile intercepting a mysterious flying object that exhibited extraordinary behavior inconsistent with known technology. He underscores challenges faced by government programs investigating such phenomena, constrained by bureaucratic limits, limited funding, and the reluctance to publicly acknowledge ongoing research. Palmer expresses skepticism about conventional alien visitation theories, favoring explanations that involve unexplained natural phenomena, possible dimensional bleed-throughs, or localized time anomalies. He references a documentary titled Age of Disclosure, that proposes amnesty for whistleblowers and calls for transparency in government programs allegedly misappropriating funds related to UAP research. 
Discussing past close encounters and consistent eyewitness reports, particularly in areas like the Santa Catalina Channel, he brings forward hypotheses involving technology capable of transitioning seamlessly between air and water with no apparent damage, raising questions about advanced propulsion and material science possibly at play. These reflections invite reconsideration of the nature of such phenomena beyond traditional extraterrestrial narratives. Palmer offers a detailed critique of China's integration of civil and military industrial capacity, emphasizing its aggressive approach to manufacturing scale and efficiency. He explains how China mandates civilian shipbuilding to meet military standards, effectively assembling a ghost fleet ready for rapid militarization in the event of conflict, especially regarding Taiwan contingencies. China's superior naval shipbuilding capacity massively outstrips the United States, with estimates of their ability to produce hundreds of vessels in the time it takes America to build one aircraft carrier. Linked to this industrial strategy is Palmer's view on a potential Chinese invasion of Taiwan, predicting that instead of immediate full-scale military action, China may pursue tactics like economic blockade or incremental escalation to avoid direct conflict while exerting pressure. He highlights issues facing U.S. support for Taiwan, particularly the shortage and delayed delivery of promised arms, which undermines effective deterrence. Palmer urges the U.S. to refocus on being a reliable world gun store, supplying allies with sufficient defensive capabilities but avoiding direct military engagements abroad, as public appetite for prolonged foreign wars wanes. Amid worries about losing manufacturing competitiveness, Palmer underscores the importance of maintaining robust American industrial capacity for national defense. He stresses that the ability to mass-produce weapons and vehicles in existing automotive and industrial factories was a decisive factor in historic conflicts like World War II and remains critical today. The U.S. defense sector is shifting towards weapon systems explicitly designed for easy manufacturing with commercially available tools a stark contrast to costly, specialized factories. He cites his company's development of streamlined cruise missiles and AI-powered autonomous fighter jets as examples of efficient manufacturing combined with cutting-edge technology. This approach counters China's manufacturing advantages and fragmented U.S. defense production by emphasizing scalability and innovation. The podcast frames this industrial competition as a core strategic element in long-term national security. Palmer and Joe Rogan touch on themes of governance and media influence, with discussions on political cynicism, public trust, and contrasting cultural attitudes between the US, UK, China, and Russia. Palmer notes differences like widespread acceptance of social media censorship in the UK and China, emphasizing how societies vary in willingness to police speech and protest. He also recalls his own experience moderating a forum with a participant advocating overly restrictive content rules, paralleled with contemporary UK laws criminalizing certain social media posts. Concerns about government surveillance and content control echo in descriptions of how news and information flow are shaped by political incentives, including deep state influence and media complicity. Palmer praises platforms like Joe Rogan's podcast for democratizing complex topics that mainstream outlets avoid or underreport due to institutional pressures. The conversation touches on the evolving landscape of social media, where bots and disinformation campaigns exacerbate polarization, challenging objective discourse. Palmer shares personal political anecdotes, including his early and sometimes controversial support for Donald Trump. He recounts writing to Trump at age 15, encouraging a presidential run, appreciating Trump's outsider perspective and business acumen amid political establishment dissatisfaction. Palmer contextualizes his critique of mainstream political figures, such as Hillary Clinton's inconsistent stances on issues like the federal speed limit and corn ethanol subsidies, describing a pivotal moment when he chose not to support her due to perceived dishonesty and manipulation. He reflects on his engagement with pro-immigration advocacy groups prior to becoming more critical based on later observations of visa abuses. His narrative weaves through moments illustrating shifts in public opinion on social policies such as gay marriage, highlighting how political positions in past decades differ remarkably from present-day alignments.
Palmer also details the circumstances of his disillusionment with establishment politics and deeper involvement in national security work. Palmer explores the frontier of artificial intelligence and animal cognition, touching on ambitious efforts to develop bidirectional communication channels between humans and non-human species. He discusses the proposed X Prize for Interspecies Communication, which challenges teams to develop verifiable, repeatable language understanding with species such as dolphins and parrots. The conversation highlights the complexity of animal languages, which may involve ultrasonic signaling, phase differences, and multimodal communication beyond human hearing and observation. He recounts the case of Alex the African Gray Parrot, a prime example of avian intelligence demonstrating vocabulary and reasoning abilities comparable to human toddlers, despite a small and differently structured brain. Palmer speculates on the possibility of genetically augmenting animal intelligence and reflects on evolutionary theories that humankind itself could be a product of genetic uplift by higher powers or advanced civilizations. His Christian faith informs a philosophical view connecting human creativity and technological progress to being made in a higher image, drawing parallels between scientific speculation and spiritual beliefs. The conversation shifts to notions of nostalgia and cultural evolution. Palmer expresses appreciation for the 1960s as a period of significant cultural and artistic innovation, contrasting it with the perceived loss of craftsmanship and passion in contemporary industries. He laments the commodification and subscription-driven nature of modern products such as cars and video games, lamenting how companies increasingly prioritize marketability and social agendas over genuine quality and user experience. He emphasizes the importance of novelty seeking as an evolved human trait fueling progress, yet simultaneously acknowledges the value in revering and learning from the past. Discussions include the role of psychedelics in cultural transformations and the tension between creative freedom and financialized corporate structures. Palmer critiques the ways political correctness and social engineering infiltrate creative industries, often at the expense of core customers, describing an ongoing realignment spurred by economic pressures and shifting employee demographics. Palmer showcases his current work developing next-generation military equipment, focusing on the integration of augmented reality, AR, and ballistic protection in soldier helmets and gear. He describes the Eagle Eye system, designed to merge night vision, thermal imaging, signals intelligence, and ballistics data into a seamless heads-up augmented reality experience. This setup allows soldiers to see the positions of friendlies and enemies, drones, and threats in real time, simulating a hive mind with highly coordinated battlefield awareness. He explains engineering feats, such as combining ballistic plates with solid-state ceramic battery technologies, reducing weight and increasing modularity without sacrificing protection or power supply. The helmets incorporate directional hearing enhancements, laser protective modules, and easily serviceable components, reflecting a holistic approach to soldier survivability and combat effectiveness. Palmer recounts overcoming initial challenges faced by competitors such as Microsoft and demonstrates the confidence that comes with leading cutting-edge defense innovation, underscoring the ethical imperative for competent and principled engineers to work on such technologies. Toward the end of the podcast, a philosophical dialogue touches on simulation theory and its relationship to traditional religious beliefs. Palmer reveals a personal belief in a creator or higher power and suggests that simulation theory is a modern reinterpretation of spiritual ideas about divine creation and observation. He contemplates the profound coincidences in his life trajectory and the improbabilities of sequential successes, pondering whether this hints toward a purposive design rather than random chance. The discussion spans broader themes of consciousness, purpose, and the nature of reality, recognizing that despite technological advances, many mysteries about existence remain. Palmer draws parallels between narratives in science fiction and metaphysical concepts, suggesting that humanity's quest for understanding may eventually bridge the gap between science and spirituality. This reflective tone serves as a meditative closing to an expansive conversation, blending cutting-edge technology with timeless human questions.